All right, so we're going to be taking a look at pulleys and at wood machines in this video. And honestly, the process is pretty much the same. There are a few key assumptions we're going to make, but if you follow the same problem solving steps, there's nothing really any different than what we've done before. So often pulleys are things, you'll see ropes that go around the pulley, you might know. They're, it effectively, all it's really doing at this point is changing the direction that we're applying the force, okay? There are some key assumptions that are necessary to make this work. So if you think too hard about just using the pulleys, I wanna make sure you understand the assumptions because if these assumptions are violated, then some things don't actually work out and are probably a bit more advanced because pulleys are kind of a complicated scenario, same with ropes. First, Generally, we're going to assume the mass of the rope is negligible. AP Physics C, that may not be true. We will handle those cases, but in AP Physics 1, we are going to mostly ignore, or they're going to say something, it's a light string, or they'll indicate explicitly that the mass of the rope is really small compared to that, or they just won't mention the mass of the rope. But we are going to assume that because that mass does affect how things accelerate. If it's like a chain or something like that, then you can't necessarily assume that the mass is negligible. We do assume the rope is not stretchable. This is not, I, I don't see a lot of people explain this super well, but the reason this is important is that both any blocks that are connected by that rope will have the same kinematic motions. That means they'll have the same displacement or they'll have the same speed, scalar quantities. They'll have the same speed, the same magnitude of acceleration. They'll travel the same distance, okay? They may be in different directions, so the vectors aren't the same, right? The directions are, but the magnitudes of those vectors, that is, if I have a rope, this, if this guy has to move one meter and the rope is not stretchable, then this block also has to move one meter along with it, okay? This part, this assumption here, um, the pulley is negligible mass and friction. They will say this a lot. Now, and, and commonly with that, th th this we will begin to ignore when we get into the later units in rotation, or at least we'll, we'll, this assumption may not hold. Um, but for now, we're going to assume the pulley is negligible mass and friction. It's very, very easy to rotate. There's no resistance when we begin to spin it. That is, it doesn't take any effort to cause a pulley to spin. Okay, and that means that the rope can just act as a, a transfer point between forces, okay? The combination of all of these three things, okay, the net result is we are allowed to assume now that the tension is uniform throughout the rope. If any of these things are not met, then we don't necessarily, we like if not all three are true, then we cannot assume the tension for, is uniform throughout the rope. That is kind of like when we did problems where it was just a single straight rope and we're pulling to the side, we said the rope is has the uniform tension. If any of these are violated, then it's not actually, we can't assume that. And it generally is not going to be true that the tension is uniform. Okay, so let's take a look at some examples or like, let's look at this problem solving strategies. We're still gonna use the exact same problem solving process. Um, when you are setting directions, you want to set the directions of the acceleration. Remember, that's our step. One of our steps is to identify the acceleration. We want to make sure we point those arrows consistently. That is, if one block is moving up and the other is going down, we say this block has an acceleration upward and this one has an acceleration downward, okay? We'll, we'll go through some examples and you see. Recommended but not required, highly recommend, I do recommend this, is make the positive direction in the direction of which way you have established the acceleration. Some problems you may not be able to determine that, but set a direction. And if you end up getting a negative number, it means you guess the direction wrong. Okay, so let's go through an example so you can kind of see how this plays out. So this is a classic example, Matt Atwood machine. Masses of the blocks are M1, M2, and we're just gonna say M2 is bigger than M1. Assume that the masses of the string and the frictionless are pulley are negligible and find the following. Find an equation for the acceleration of the two blocks. Okay, so first of all, they're telling us M2 is bigger than M1. That means we think this guy's gonna accelerate downward, this guy's gonna accelerate upward, okay? First step, I skipped the first step, but that's really important that you understand that consistency there. Let's do our free body diagram of M1, right? So he has gravity acting down on it, M1G, and then he's being pulled on by a rope, we'll call it T. Remember we assume, because of all of this, we assume that the tension in the rope is uniform. This is the same rope, got the same tension throughout that, so we don't have to call it T1 or anything like that. M2, Right, look at the free body diagram of this guy. We have gravity pointing down, and then we had a rope touching it, so that tension pulls upwards. Okay, and then here's where the acceleration part kind of comes into play. We're gonna make these the positive directions when we do our F net equals MA. So for M1, we're gonna do F net equals MA, 
And so upward is going to be positive. So the tension's pointing up and one G is pointing down. This is equal to M1 times the acceleration. And these two have the same acceleration because we assume the rope is not, not stretchable. So they're going to move together with the same uh, acceleration, magnitude of acceleration. Now let's do the M2, F net equals MA. This one down is the positive direction because that's the way it's accelerating. That's that consistency. So M2G is positive and tension is upward and that equals M2 times A. And now we can just add these two together to get rid of, oops, I'm gonna move this equation down here so I can add them together and get rid of the tension there. Cause I don't, I don't want my answer in terms of tension. They did not tell me what the tension was. And so we're gonna add these two together. The tensions will cancel. You'll get M2G minus M1G is equal to M2A plus M1A. And then you can factor out an A, M2 plus M1. And then you can factor out a G here, M2 minus M1 and then divide that over to then solve for the acceleration. So it's gonna be G times M2 minus M1 divided by M2 plus M1, like that. Okay, so that's the acceleration. Now find an equation for the tension in the string. Well, you can use either of the equations, but we can use this one here. This is gonna be tensions equal to M1A plus M1G, right? And you can factor out the M1, it's gonna be A plus G, and this is M1, we have the A right here, right? G M2 minus M1 over M2 plus M1 plus G, like that. So that's the tension in there. Don't have to simplify, it's not a math class. Uh, you just gotta leave it like that. Find the acceleration and tension when block one has a mass of two kilograms and block two has a mass of four kilograms. This is just plugging in numbers at this point, which is a really good exercise. Just make sure you can do. So G is, we'll say G is 10. Okay, M2 is four minus two divided by four plus two. So that's gonna be two over six, 20 over six, which is gonna be 3.33 meters per second squared. Then the tension's gonna be M1A plus G. You could plug into this formula or you could just say like, well, it's two times 3.33 plus 10. You can use 9.8 if you want, it doesn't really matter. In AP physics, you are allowed to use either assumption uh, and that gives you 26.7 Newtons, like that. Okay, let's look at another one. Two blocks are connected by a massless rope as shown uh, below. The mass of the block in the table is four kilograms. Hanging mass is one kilogram. The table and the uh, pulley, so this is M2 is one kilogram, M1 is four kilograms. Find the acceleration of the system. Okay, so we have the acceleration. Now notice in this figure, they gave you two different accelerations, but again, we assume that the rope's not stretchable. They're the same acceleration. And that makes sense. This block M2 is gonna fall, M1 is gonna move to the right. So same magnitudes, but different directions because one's pointing down and one's pointing to the right. So obviously not pointing in the same direction, but same magnitude. Let's draw the free body diagram of M1, right? So we have gravity acting down. What's touching it? We have a rope pulling it to the right and this tension is uniform. That's our assumptions there. We seem to assume the uniform tension throughout the rope. What else is touching it? We got a block here, and we have a normal force acting there like that from that surface. Okay, for M2, let's do the free body diagram. He just has gravity acting on it, or he has gravity, and then we have a rope touching it, and that's gonna pull away from it. That's T. We have the directions of the acceleration, so that will establish as our positive directions. Okay, and so then when we do F net equals MA, Again, we're gonna to say to the right is tension, that's equal to M1 times A. It's only X, and we'll just do the X forces, the Y forces. There's no Y acceleration, so we don't really have to worry about that. And then for this guy, because down is the positive direction, we'll have M2G minus T is equal to M2 times A. We can plug that into here. We'll get M2G minus M1A is equal to M2A. Move that over, you get M2G is equal to M2A plus M1A, which is A times M2 plus M1, right? Like that. And so then the acceleration is gonna be M2G over M2 plus M1. I just do it in terms of the symbols. You can plug in the numbers if you want. Obviously M2 would be one, that would be 10 over five. So it's gonna be about two, but you don't, I mean, that's just, hopefully, I think you guys can do that. Find the tension in the rope. Well, it's M1 times A here. So it's gonna be M1 times A, which is literally four times two. So it's gonna be eight Newtons there. Okay, um, 
we're going to ignore part C, but part C, well, part C is kind of interesting. Let's just do it as a review for kinematics. Find the speed when the hanging mass hit the floor. So if it starts from rest and is lo initially located one meters from the floor. Well, this is our kinematics process, right? Asking how fast is it going down here because he's moving at a constant acceleration of two meters per second squared, right? It's not free fall, right? Because it's got this rope, but we know the acceleration. So if we list our kinematic variables, right? We say um, it's one meter, so he's going to fall. If we make down the positive direction, he's going to fall one meters. Initial velocity is zero at rest. The acceleration is two meters per second squared. And we would like to know the final velocity right here, right? So what kinematic equation will we use to connect those? Would be this kinematic equation that will connect those variables for us. So that's going to be zero squared plus two times two times one, which is four. So V is going to be two meters per second, okay? that. Now, you can also do a systems approach with pulleys, because remember what we did before with systems is that it can simplify the mass significantly in there, right? So we can use a systems approach. Now, the way you have to handle this, because the pulley is changing the directions, we got to straighten it out and make the rope a single straight line. Now, we're not physically going to do that. It's just sort of like a mental exercise, because all you're thinking about is that the pulley is literally just changing the directions of the forces, but we'll try to make it into a straight line force, right? Or a straight line motion, an equivalent straight line motion. So let me, let me kind of show you how this works, especially with the Atwood machine. If I wanted to find the acceleration, just, as a, 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 just to recall, what was the acceleration we got here was this expression G M2 minus M1. I'm actually going to copy this over just so we have it as a reference when we go through the uh, this this exercise down here with this example it's exact same scenario, but again that took a lot of work. Sometimes the systems approach can be helpful, right? So that's the that's what we got before. So let's take a look at our free body diagram, and this is the case where we're going to make both blocks the system. We'll go ahead and include the rope. It doesn't matter if you include the rope really, but it makes it internal. So we're not going to include the pulley there, right? But if we draw the free body diagrams of the M1 and M2 system. Right. If we want to think about that, um, let's think about like. Um, okay. Let me let me just draw it with the, the the thing like this. So we have M1G going down here. I'll include the tension for now, and this is our free body diagrams. Right. This is kind of how it was before, and we know this guy was accelerating upward, and this guy was accelerating downward. Now, what we're gonna do is straighten it so the acceleration is just in one line motion. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to imagine that we're going to straighten this thing out. And you, you do have to imagine it because it can be a little tricky. to. So we're going to rotate this thing so that the accelerations are pointing in the same way at that point. right? So we're going to rotate it this guy like this and then rotate this guy so his acceleration is also pointing in the same direction. Okay. I know it's like hard to read now because I rotated the letters too. Oops. Um, so now we have the acceleration all pointing to the right. The arrows are the most important part. So again, the tension kind of internal, but just recognize that they're going to cancel each other out. If I make right the positive direction and do F net equals MA of this system, then we'll say M2G is pointing to the right. M1G is pointing to the left. The tensions kind of cancel each other. And the mass of our system is M1 plus M2 times the acceleration, right? And so again, you can factor out a G and then divide by m1 plus m2, and you get the acceleration here. And notice that we get the same expression that we got up here, right? So the exact same thing. So it can be tricky. I would make sure you get really comfortable doing it both ways, right? If you, if, well, be very comfortable doing it without the systems approach, and then use the systems approach if you can, like, it, it will help speed things up but it's not required for you to fully understand it, but it can speed up problem solving by doing that systems approach there. And so that's what I would suggest is that you practice just visually trying to straighten them out. It's almost like we're just straightening out all of the free body diagrams so that it's like one single motion because that's all the pulley is actually doing there, okay? So um, 